What's up guys, welcome to Voldora Kun. From our previous episodes, we have seen Ramuru successfully defeated Clayman and recognized as a true demon lord. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, we will put the links in the description below. You can watch in these videos what happened during the Walpurgis battle and the upcoming events. Just a quick warning, this videos contain spoilers from the light novel. So now in this video we will review what happened next, where Diablo narrated his journey to Pharma's kingdom. But before we will proceed, please like, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now without further ado, let's proceed with the video. After the demon lords have settled with the name Octogram, they decided to have meals. These subordinates or maids have prepared meals for everyone. They are Misery, the green-haired maid and Rain, the blue-haired maid. Just like what Ramras had said before, the Walpurgis banquet was meant for the demon lords to communicate and to exchange informations. Some of the demon lords left soon after the meeting ended while the remaining stayed behind to enjoy the tasty food and to chat with other demon lords. There are a total of six demon lords left after Valentine and Leon left. While Guy, Milam, Ramrus, Dino, Dragwell, and Ramuru decided to stay. Carrion, Frey, and Ramuru decided to discuss their future plans on other occasion about the reconstruction of their cities and Milam as their new leader. On the other hand, Ramrus is still pushing Ramuru to let her live on his kingdom, even when Ramuru doesn't want it. She wants to bring Beretta and Trainee with her. Dragwell and Voldora are having a cheerful discussion and Guy and Dino are also having a good chat. Ramuru doesn't want to let Milam drink because the situation would be uncontrollable if something happens. Also, Milam was able to fool Ramuru before. Unexpectedly, Ramrus announced, then I shall take the drink. With the blink of an eye, Ramrus smothered herself onto the wine glass and got herself instantly dead drunk. Beretta and Trainee went to aid her with a panicked expression and Ramuru left Ramrus to their care. The feast with demon lords ended. Everyone decided to leave before Ramrus wakes up. The Walpurgis banquet started at midnight and ended at noon of the next day. Ramuru stopped worrying because he was finally able to make it through the Walpurgis banquet safe and sound. Ramuru left the meeting and returned to Tempest through teleportation with dimension domination. Ramuru was reassured because the country was still intact and that everyone is obeying Ramuru's orders to tighten the security. As soon as Ramuru entered the town, the patrolling soldiers and residents begin to kneel down on the side of the streets while opening a path for Ramuru. From the end of the road, Diablo walks towards his master. Diablo flashes a bright smile with an expression of overflowing joy. Both Rigard and Diablo welcomed and send Ramuru a congratulatory message. Rigard said, Welcome back, Ramuru Sama, and Diablo congratulated Ramuru, Congratulations on becoming a member of the Octogram. We are most thankful for your safe return. Ramuru is surprised and confused by how they knew he's officially a demon lord now. Also, he's the one who came up with the title Octogram, and it was only revealed during his meeting with the demon lords. Another thing is that, shouldn't Diablo be taking Pharma's kingdom right now? How come he was still able to plan for this welcoming activity? Ramuru asked Diablo about everything and Diablo said he asked a favor from Voldora. Voldora seemed guilty, and after interrogating him, he admitted that he made a deal with Diablo. For only offered meals and three servings of dessert, Voldora promised to tell Diablo everything that happened during the banquet. That's how Diablo found out that Ramuru has been approved to become Demon Lord and the Demon Lord's new title of Octogram. Ramuru thinks that Shuna's culinary skill has grown lately. She was able to produce a large variety of desserts and she can even recreate pastry puffs that have just been introduced at the cafe in Ingrassia Kingdom. The Jura Tempest can now develop even more new desserts with the addition of a variety of alcoholic beverages. The cafe manager Mr. Yoshida would also provide assistance in the process of creating new dishes. To obtain Mr. Yoshida's assistance, Ramuru prepared variety of wines for him. Mr. Yoshida also said, now I can recreate previously impossible cuisines. Ramuru even thinks to himself that they may be able to take over the world with culinary supremacy.
Ramuru's thoughts was interrupted when he heard Xian and Diablo quarreling. Diablo asked Xian, have you fulfilled your duty as Ramuru-sama's bodyguard? And Xian responded that, as long as she's around, Diablo is simply unimportant. She said that she should be the one to question him about the progress of the mission assigned to him by Ramuru. Diablo boasted that his mission proceeded without any flaw. Xian and Diablo continued to fight with their stares, and before they can quarrel again, Ramuru stopped them. He said, you two, behave yourselves. After Xian and Diablo stopped and behaved, they all decided to rest and continue the conversation later. Ramuru was greeted with the resident's joyful expressions. He wanted to celebrate a feast and have fun with everyone, but Benamaru and the rest will have to return from their journey yet. So, they went to take a bath in the hot spring and indulged with Haruna's delicious food. After refreshing themselves, they went to the meeting room and everyone settled down, they listened to Diablo's report from his journey to Pharma's kingdom. With their victory against Clayman, the only issues left were building a new kingdom on Youm's side and how to deal with the Western Saints Church. They will also need to resolve the future relations with Beast Kingdom Eurasania, Harpy Kingdom, Fulbrosia and the worshippers of Dragon who worships Milam. Ramuru assumed that Diablo dropped the mission of eliminating Pharma's kingdom and crowning Youm as the new king and returned to Jura Tempest. He then asked if Diablo needs any reinforcements, because he will let Soe's party assist Diablo. However, Xian interrupts and said, a cheap shot nobody like him only deserves to make tea for Ramuru-sama. I should have been the one to attend to such matter. But Diablo replied that there is no need for reinforcements because everything has been going well according to plan. Diablo narrated his journey to Pharma's kingdom. He first restored Archbishop Rahim and head of court mage rays into their original form, because Xian has turned them into inhuman abominations which looks like a living meatloaf. She skinned them one thin layer of skin at a time, by peeling away layers of flesh, and exposed the muscle underneath. Xian has been practicing fish skinning with living people, and she even ensured that the ones getting skinned won't feel any physical pain during the process. She was able to push the captives to the point of psychological breakdown, by using her unique skill cook. Once the captives reach their physical limits, she would treat them with healing potion and start over. The sanity of three of them was destroyed, and there is no way they could return to their country in that state that's why Diablo decided to work on reversing their curse. Rahim rejoiced as he came back to his original form and expressed his gratitude towards Diablo. Raisin begs Diablo out of loyalty for his king. Raisin said, I am not important here please restore the king. After laughing, Diablo responded, are you begging me? Then you should understand that such a request does not come cheap. Raisin recalls now and goes pale with fear in his heart. This Diablo is a terrifying demon, he is an archdemon. If he was to appear in some smaller country, he would have caused a crisis that could bring the whole nation down and even categorized himself as a threat level up to special rank A, a calamity. Moreover, his real identity is one of the primordial demons and is already serving a master. That person is the master of all these monsters. A being with power beyond one's imagination, a demon lord. After all the realization, Raisin stands up from his seat to kneel before Diablo. He said, of course, I understand. Please grant me the privilege to be your servant. My humble life would be pledged towards you. Please be magnanimous and spare the life of King Edmulus. Diablo nodded and said that Raisin will be of use someday, and he should spare his life however, he will display the disgusting form of the king to all the bigwigs of this nation who foolishly rose against his beloved Ramuru. Diablo also added, I shall be generous this one time. Your performances in the future shall not only determine the fate of the king, but whether or not the whole of Pharmus will become a lifeless wasteland. Their only chance of survival is if they cooperate obediently with Diablo. Both Raisin and Rahim begins to kneel down and pledge loyalty to Diablo's grace. They have given up, not just King Edmulus, but on the Pharma's kingdom itself, because a country that defies a demon lord will be destroyed. Lastly, the king said, I declare, in the name of the last king of Pharmus, to be submissive of whatever demands are requested by Diablo, 
because he knows that if he resists, he will be eliminated. After hearing the pleas of the three captives, he has secretly activated the unique skill tempter, and the three becomes Diablo's slaves. Rest assured. I won't do anything bad, as long as you obey me. He said with a smile on his face. The people remaining in the kingdom of Pharmas has been waiting for updates since the regular magic connection was cut. They used to be confident that their army of 20,000 would not lose due to its huge number, but now they couldn't even confirm the life or death of the king. The day both Raisin and Archbishop Rahim returned to the kingdom and teleported to the castle through the elemental-based magic waypoint transportation. The patrolling soldiers discovered the two unconscious person lying, and the soldiers tried to confirm their identities. One of them is the otherworlder, Shogo Taguchi and the other one is the king's close acquaintance, Archbishop Rahim. The archbishop collapsed due to fatigue, while the young man Shogo has been hugging onto a box like it's a treasure. One of the soldiers went to peek on the content of the box, and he let out a horrible scream. There were slimy content leaking out from the box followed by a disgusting odor. The box contained distorted meatloaf made up of chopped up intestines which was owned by the ruler of this kingdom. The town ministers of the nation are all at the hall and witnessed the horrible scene with fear. A box was placed on the throne, and there were meatloafs in it with their king's face buried in the center. They all panicked and asked what happened, and how did their king end up this way? Where are the other two in the nation's army? What has Knight Commander Fulgen been up to, and how could all this happen with Raisin's company? They were all in panic upon seeing what their master had become. Some began to scream, cry, shout, and vomit. At first, they were hesitant if it was really the king, and it turned out it was indeed the real king. An unusual commotion dawned in the Pharma's kingdom because their ruler, King Edmilus, has returned, but only in a miserable state. One of the ministers shouted, what are you all doing? Go and save the king, and all the mages gathered to try out every spell. They even summoned high priests from the Western Saints Church to aid the king, yet none of them was effective. There is no way they could save the king. And that's it. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video.